So, hi, I'm Olivia, and I'm almost 12, and I'm going into sixth grade. Hi, I'm Carter, and I'm 13, and I'm going into eighth grade. We started a company back in 2009 to save endangered species, and we, um, it all started because our aunt adopted cheetahs for us, and that um, she, she came back and sh she told us she was adopting cheetahs for us, and um, we got excited. And then I asked my dad, why do cheetahs need to be adopted? And he said, well, great question. Well, if there weren't cheetahs, um, were, if there weren't agencies around to save your cheetahs, then um, who's going to save them? And um, he had a good point. And so that got me really upset that they probably won't live. And so then I asked my dad um, um, if we could do something. And he said, someday when you get older, you can start a company. And I, and I took that as, Daddy said we're starting a company. So then f um, um, I went to my brother, and he, uh, we got excited about it. And then we kept um, asking our dad, when are we going to start this? When are we going to start this? And he said, um, someday, someday. And we thought he was lying to us. And, and then, then he said, um, if you guys can prove to me that you guys can do this, researching about animals without him reminding us. And if, he, if we did that, then we could start a company. And then for 14 days straight, we researched. And um, he didn't have to remind us. And so then my dad said, um, you could start a company. And so that's how we started. Our company is One More Generation, or OMG, as a lot of people like to say. Mm -hmm. We were looking through all the animals um, for the 14 days. We were looking at all the animals, and we were saying, oh my gosh. And my mom said, we need to um incorporate those letters OMG into the company name. We go to schools and we teach kids about um, endangered species sometimes, and we just recently got back from South Africa where we were teaching kids about the issue of rhino poaching and what's happening because rhino poaching is a very big issue in South Africa and we just wanted to tell kids how bad it is and a lot of people didn't even know what a rhino was in South Africa and I was really surprised. People in South Africa didn't know what a rhino was? A lot of people didn't. Wow. So how did you end up going to South Africa? Well, we've been there once already, so then we were planning to make another trip because we were collecting letters from all around the world um, asking um, if they could write to the president of South Africa, asking them to stop rhino poaching because he's getting money for it. And he's getting part of the, like, I don't know, billion dollars that they, so they could kill the rhino. And so we collected letters from all around the world and we, our goal was to collect 1,000 letters and we actually collected 10,000 letters. So then we went there and we tried to meet with the president, President Zuma, but we didn't get a meeting with him so we met with the government of South Africa. And then um, what we did was we presented all letters and we asked, we told him, do you promise to um, read all the letters um, that we give you? And we only had like 15 in our hand. And he said, I promise. And then we stacked up the 10,000 letters. And, and then his eyes got big, and that was just funny. I don't remember his name. If you go over there, you'll realize they have a different kind of accent over there, and we Their didn't exactly understand it. And he said his name like five or six times, but then he had the accent which we couldn't understand that well, and he was sometimes speaking in African. African. Uh, so we couldn't, I don't remember his name, if I did, I'd probably say it right now, but I don't remember. Okay. So what would you guys say to people that are actually poaching rhinos? What would you tell them? If you could speak directly to them. I'm going to like say it easy because I'd, I'd probably get harsh on them, but I'm not going to. So this might be harsh, but um, well, just think about that. What if you were the rhino and you had children and... Um, then somebody came up to you and just decided to kill you just for one of your body parts, like your feet. And um, I, I just want them to think about how that feels. And the rhinos just sit there for two days bleeding to death. 
and that's got to be painful. So I just want them to think about that. Have you guys traveled elsewhere in the world? We're going to Vietnam this March to talk about, we got invited to speak there. And we're probably going to, we've been making a documentary about the rhino poaching. And so we might finish it off there. So we'll probably spend a couple weeks in there and um, just educating people. So what do you think is the biggest challenge to saving endangered animals? And not necessarily any one particular, whether it's the rhinos or the tigers or the pandas, but in general, what do you think people need to know that will help them understand that we need to save these animals? I think that people need to know to listen to at least everybody, especially kids, because I have a lot of people, like if I say something to them, they'll look at my parents and like I say to them, no plastic bag please, and they'll just look at me and then look at my parents, and then my parents have to say, no plastic bag, and then they listen to them. Or I talk to somebody on Skype who we're trying to get to stop um, like poaching or stop something and they'll, and we ask them if your kids asked you to stop this would you say um, would you stop it and they would say no kids aren't smart enough for that and so I just get frustrated when people do that and just don't listen to kids. Did you meet kids in South Africa? Uh, yes um, we stayed at a lodge um, and we worked with her um, the owner um, of the lodge, and he has a daughter, so I met her. Uh, we have some other people who are wor working on stopping the rhino poaching. Um, we have um, people that um, we went on safaris with that were also help stop r um, rhino poaching, and so th there was a couple kids there, but mostly grown-ups. So. so you all are really lucky. You grew up kind of privileged Western society. You see in Africa probably some people go out and they herd rhinos, maybe they do it for the money, they feel like they have to, don't have any choices. What would you say to them? What are some of the other choices you think they might be making um, that they could be doing? Um, well, like some people, like, um, like for an example, some Chinese or whoever's trying to sell the rhino horn go up to people, let's say in Africa or wherever there's a rhino, somebody who doesn't have that much money and um, and who doesn't live in like a regular house. Um, they go up to them and say, I will pay you this much money to go um, kill this rhino and get the horn for me. And like ship it or fly over to Asia or New York where they're selling as well to um, go drop this off at a uh, black market. And they say, sure, because that's for the family. They're getting money for their, fa they're getting food for their family. I get that. But they're all the people who are, um, giving the people that, um, those people that money are also um, putting them in danger of getting arrested or... Or even killed. Yeah, or even killed by poachers. And, I mean, not poachers, sorry. Um, by rangers who are trying to protect these rhinos. And um, so they're putting those people in danger. And I just don't think that's right. Are there any programs there or nonprofits? that you encounter that have alternatives for people who used to do poaching and maybe don't do it anymore who are making different kinds of choices so far that you've found yet? Um, well, we... Partnered we, up with a group called Dance to be Wild. Oh, yeah. And it gives kids a second chance and other people a second chance at life. And Dance to be Wild gets um, people who live in poor um, townships, townships and they'll bring them to national levels of dancing. They'll teach them how to dance, and then when they they win like twenty and thirty thousand dollars for the whole community, and then they could start um, rebuilding some things, getting food, paying people, and it's just a great way of um, helping other people get through life, uh, difficult times in life. You guys were were very fortunate that you got to go directly to South Africa. You got to go to where sort of the action is, so to speak, where where rhinos are being poached. That's a situation where the, the the death of a rhino is immediately the cause of somebody killing that rhino, right? 
but a lot of endangered species are endangered not so much because they're being hunted, but because of changes in their climate uh, due to global warming and whatnot. So for instance, with the polar cap melting more and more, and you know we're losing lots and lots of polar bears and whatnot, this type of thing. So nobody's really going there and directly killing those animals. But what we're doing as people is sort of indirectly killing them. So how do you how do you talk to people like maybe uh, friends, you know, families of friends of yours and things like that, and say, you know, just because you're not going out and directly killing an animal doesn't mean that you don't have some part all in all these changes that are ultimately endangering these animals. Well, we could educate them, say, well. You try, you're not trying to hurt the animals. I know you're not trying to hurt the animals, but in, one, in some way, in, um, you're, you are hurting the animals by, let's say, using, um, like turning on your car when you're just sitting there, um, when you're like throwing away um, trash, or just like maybe, like we saw a lady today at Starbucks, and she would, like, had two, like a water bottle, um, like two Starbucks um, cups with um, water in them on top of each other because she was trying to get straws. And she grabbed straws, she grabbed four straws, she actually needed three, so she dropped the straw on the ground. And she never picked it up. And so I would probably say something to them that even if it's in somewhere, it could still hurt something. Like if somebody like picked that up and then took it, like, or it like maybe it was by the door and it flew out and maybe like an animal ate it or. So what's, what's threatening the rhinos? Their only threat is man and, um, and also, and their babies are fine except when the mother gets killed and the babies doesn't have anybody there. The babies don't know how to feed themselves so they just die of starvation or um, they die, let's say they were still milking on their mom. Um, they die of that, and like they because of poachers, they die. What do you uh, What do you hope to do in the future for yourselves, um, either in an environmental area or in relation to, to wildlife? When I grow up, I want to be a vet to help save endangered species, and um, hopefully, when I get um, older, I'm going to get um, rabies shots so I could probably because I volunteer at a place called Aware in Georgia where they take in animals and they rehab them, injured animals and they rehab them. So I can't do much things with like raccoons and stuff like that. So I, when I get older, I probably want to get my rabies shot so I could help those animals. I want to be a marine biologist. So I don't know if that kind of works in the ocean like that. But um, the future plans I think is to get bigger and to get more schools involved in what we're doing and for other people to understand why what we're doing is so important to our next generation and the generation right now. Some people may look at you and say, oh, this is all great and fine that you guys are doing this, but you don't understand how the world really works. You're too young to know that. And when you grow up, you'll know how the world works and you'll see that it's you don't, it's not so simple. How does that make you feel in one way? And secondly, you think it's so bad having a, being kind of a dreamer, you know? Seeing how things could be and then working toward that. How do you respond to that? Well, my dad always tells me money doesn't grow on trees. So basically he's telling me that the, um, the world outside of what we're doing, like, it's still what we're doing costs money and you can't just do everything tr trying to save it you have to do as much as you can with the money you've got so that's what I know about it so I don't know all, all the stuff that grown-ups do but I know stuff about animals and our environment you might not understand right I might not understand right now what everything is but when I do get older I will and at least I'll be making a difference so that when I get older, I'll understand differently than most people. So that's what I would respond to. Awesome. That's great. That was a great answer.